Hello everyone. The next four presentations are intended to give you an idea about the law of procedure that governs the civil and criminal proceedings. Law can also be classified under two heads, the substantive law and the procedural law. Substantive law can further be classified under two heads, substantive civil law and substantive criminal law. Substantive civil law defines rights and liabilities and provides remedies for violation of rights and breach of duties. It can be studied under four heads, law of property dealing with proprietary rights in rem, law of obligation dealing with proprietary rights in personam, law of status dealing with personal rights, and law of torts dealing with civil wrongs and remedies for civil wrongs. Substantive criminal law defines crimes and provides punishments. It may be in the form of general penal law or in the form of special laws covering specific offenses like corruption, dowry, money laundering, etc. The procedural law governs the process of litigation which include all legal proceedings, civil as well as criminal. The ends which the administration of justice seeks to achieve is provided by substantive law. The procedural law deals with the means and instruments by which those ends are to be achieved, while substantive law determines what facts constitute a wrong, the procedural law determines what facts constitute the proof of a wrong and how it has to be pursued. Substantive law relates to the subject matter of litigation, procedural law relates to process to be followed while pursuing a litigation. Should the offence be punished with imprisonment or fine is a question of substantive law. Why is it so? Because the existence and measure of criminal liability are matters relating to the object which the administration of justice is required to achieve. But whether an offence is punishable summarily or after a regular trial is a question of procedure. What are the elements of judicial procedure? Normal elements of judicial procedure are summons, pleadings, proof, judgment and execution. Summons are issued to ensure that all parties interested are given an opportunity to present themselves before the court and put forth their version of the dispute in question. Pleadings formulate questions of fact or law which are in issue for the use of the court as well as for the parties to the dispute. Proof is the process by which necessary data is provided by the parties to the court so as to enable the court to decide the questions in issue. Judgment is the decision itself. Execution is the last stage of the proceedings by which the decision of the court is enforced. General law of procedure in India is contained in the Civil Procedure Code dealing with procedure to be followed in civil cases, criminal procedure code dealing with procedure to be followed in criminal cases and the Indian Evidence Act dealing with the procedure for adducing evidence both in civil and in criminal cases. The next three presentations will provide details of these codes to an extent which enables you to understand and appreciate the purview and importance of these procedural codes. Thank you.